My name is Emily Agnello. I am the graduate program recruiter here at LMU. So I actually work with all of our graduate programs. I specifically um, do all the admissions work and recruitment for the Seaver College of Science and Engineering. So um, we have started a Meet the Professor series so our prospective students can get to know and get to meet our wonderful faculty who they'll be learning from and working with once they start their program here at LMU. So today we have our amazing systems engineering professor Dr. Goshkai with us. Um, so to get started, uh, Dr. Goshkai, if you could just introduce yourself, tell us about um, your, you know, yourself in general, your academic career, your um, career in the industry, and then really working at LMU. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Emily, and thanks for inviting me. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, so my name is Elham. And um, I have an extensive industry background. I work at Rand Corporation for 10 years. How many of you heard about Rand Corporation? So it's a uh, think tank. Uh, it's a, one of the um, probably oldest think tank in United States. and. <clears throat> It is federally funded, so it gets its money uh, from Congress. Pretty much the budget comes from uh, the federal government. And the, uh, at there, they do all the research on public policy. Um, and uh, inform the government uh, for any public policy that you can imagine from military to uh, education, health, art, uh, all of that. Uh, a really exciting environment. Um, so it is a really broad, multidisciplinary um, place to be because you work with many different people, many different backgrounds. Uh, I also work at the Aerospace Corporation um, for 15 years and as a senior project lead there. Um, a really a, another wonderful research uh, organization, again, federally funded um, and uh, uh, Basically, the uh, function of the aerospace is to give objective um, research and uh, helping the uh, space command to make decision about the future space systems. Again, very good. Uh, and so through this career, you can imagine that um, a lot of times I was the only woman in the room. Uh, that was some years ago. So for aerospace engineering, you don't see that many women or it, it, it's becoming um, better these days, but you could be with 200 men and uh, just one or two women barely. Uh, and it, it's an interesting, in, interesting uh, journey, actually. Um, but other than that, why I'm here at LMU? I've been adjunct faculty for 11 years at uh, LMU. So while I was full time at the aerospace, I was teaching uh, a course here and there at LMU and loved it. I love the campus. I love the students. I love the interaction. I love the a uh, close relation between the um, faculty and students, the amount of care and respect that went both ways. Um, and it, generally speaking, of course, it's a gorgeous campus. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, the people are wonderful there and it's, it's a delight to be in this environment. And also I had a lot of ideas and 
passionate about starting really interesting projects and doing a lot of interesting projects with the students. Uh, so at some point I said, well, why not? Let's make the jump. And I did it uh, this spring. Uh, and I'm teaching project management. And Natalie, you said that you're working at um, Raytheon or which company? I think she said uh, Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman. Yes, very good. Um, sorry. So, yes, uh, in Northrop Grumman, we have students from Raytheon, um, Northrop Grumman, uh, and uh, sometimes Linquist and other places in in the classroom, and it's it's a wonderful, lively discussion that happens. And as you are learning uh, project management in that class, and I also teach modeling and simulation in another class, and I also uh, am the advisor for um, capstone projects. So when you want to do your uh, thesis project, I. I'm the advisor for that. It's, it's really interesting and wonderful, actually part of uh, the education that now that you're matured at the end, you want to do a piece of work, something that you're proud of and um, do research on that piece. So that, 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 that's a wonderful thing as well. Um, any questions? So uh, by projects, can you give an example? Uh, pro project leader, you mean, for in the class, you mean? Yeah, like you said, uh, you wanted to go to LMU because you wanted to kind of get more involved with like doing starting projects. Yes. So what would that yes, look like? Yes, yes, absolutely. So yes, so uh, what do I mean by why I'm uh, why I got excited uh, joining LMU? Again, one thing is uh, close um, working relationship with the student when they get excited, we learn from each other. It's just the environment is very lively and uh, wonderful. Uh, but also, um, I believe that there is a lot that we can do in academia. Uh, one of the things that we can do is more multidisciplinary projects. Uh, a lot of times we uh, stay in our own department and uh, just stovepiped, right, uh, organization. And uh, the challenges that we have the world today is not really stovepipe, right? Whatever you look at from climate change to homelessness to even space uh, design, all of these are multidisciplinary uh, projects, right? So how can we build an infrastructure within an academia that it is, well, we have mechanical engineering department, we have system engineering department, computer science, psychology, right? So on and so forth. But how can we make it so that uh, we work together? And one of the ideas that I'm thinking about is that uh, actually making hubs that is, um, we get a research uh, area and uh, that would be a topic like, uh, as I mentioned, CubeSat or homelessness. Within that, uh, a lot of different people with a lot of different uh, background come together and work on that particular research area. And it could be from any department with the right faculty advising them. Um, 
and also uh, making sure that we link our students uh, to uh, industry and um, that they have, they get advisors on their projects early on from industry. Uh, so there wouldn't be a cultural shock after they join industry, right? They know how it works. Giving them uh, capability to uh, really in, in terms of presentation, making presentation, how they approach a problem, uh, what is essential, what is not, how to report the uh, product so that when you get into industry, you become a leader naturally, right? Because if you know, if you have those skills, and a lot of times, unfortunately, we don't get that from academia. I got my PhD from Purdue. It's a good university. Um, but when I joined um, industry, it was an absolute culture shock to me. Um, and I learned things like most people who graduate from academia and go to industry uh, in a hard way because I didn't know, right? It took me some time to really understand what it is uh, that get you to um, important positions that you actually make um, important decisions being on important projects. Uh, so, but you can learn that and also you can learn and teach that in academia and uh, it makes the students um, progress much faster in their future career. Uh, and also the other thing is, um, of course, it's, this is LMU, we want to have social impact. Uh, so, how we go about, so I'm very excited to join that and uh, do my best with the students so we can impact the society at large. And um, yeah, so that's another motivation for me, really. Any other questions, comments? Dr. Gashkai, can you expand on some of the capstone projects that you're working with now or some of the, the great projects you've worked with in the past? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So, um, a capstone project. So, uh, I have or had students working on healthcare, um, looking at uh, Kaiser, working with Kaiser and uh, making it more uh, efficient. Some of the um, emergency room actually uh, flow more efficient in Kaiser. I had students working on um, California uh, prison um, because this is a system, right? As a system engineer, everything that you can imagine is a system uh, from prison to education, to aerospace, to uh, any anything that you can imagine is a system, right? The whole thing is what it is, the vision of what it is that you want to build. What are the requirements to get there? What are the barriers? What, what, is your, what are your alternatives? and uh, how to find pros and cons of each of those alternatives and come up with a course of action. Now you can apply this to anything, right? And as you learn about project management and system engineering and all that, it, it's an E, you gain more and more capability and knowledge to apply this to anything, basically. Uh, it, 
this year we are working on a, a student that I have a student working on uh, uh, bridges and roads in Nicaragua. So in third world countries, uh, when the, there is an issue with the road, how to respond more quickly. Um, what are the implications of not responding and the issue with that? Um, we do have actually people working on uh, software design for uh, connecting um, high school kids uh, in inner city uh, with opportunities, be it colleges or job opportunities, how, how to make that like handshake uh, that we have at LMU, but uh, more targeted towards uh, younger and maybe um, students that have problem it, it's they're in disadvantaged um, areas and they don't have the network support uh, uh, network um, so there is and we have students working on um, traveling to Mars looking at the um, program and how we can um, build a better um, configuration so we can stay on Mars longer. So you can see the wide variety of the projects, right? And that is that wonderful about system engineering. You, you're not restricted to something. You can apply it to anything. So whatever your passion is really, uh, system engineering is for you because it's, it's a type of thinking. It's a type of systematic thinking and gaining capability to approach any problem systematically. And uh, so it's um, useful in any area. Wonderful. Does anyone have any other questions? Or I have other questions I keep asking. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Um, how much of a systems engineering is technical versus like the concept or theories or those systematical thinking that you're referring to? Is it, does it involve a lot of technical skills or like what? I know there's probably all different types, right? Like you've mentioned, but. Yeah, yeah. So some of them, as you said, yes, exactly. So if you want to go to aerospace, it becomes technical, right? Uh, the uh, fundamental courses of system engineering, it, there, there is a lot of conceptual ones there. Uh, so if you want to uh, basically just understand the foundation of system engineering is a lot of conceptual. There, I don't think there is anybody who can't understand what is that about or, or to have a technical background to understand it. Uh, but depending on your interest later, then you can make it technical in your interest area. Uh, William, do you have uh, comments about any of this? You've been here as graduate student who's graduating and going to PhD program. Congratulations. So uh, what are your observations and comments? Yeah. Um... Let's see, so I'm still interviewing for multiple different programs, but it's cool how I have those interviews set up for a PhD. Um, I'd say it is a pretty technical focused um, topic, especially at the um, undergraduate and graduate level. So a lot of my peers who were either industrial engineering or ops research at other schools, which is kind of equivalent to systems engineering, they do focus more on mathematical problems and modeling problems. So you can imagine it's very technical. Um, from what I've, you know, in books I've read, it seems like the managers who have a systems focus, they're not doing technical problem, they're not doing technical problems, but that's part of their role is to kind of think at things at a higher, at a higher like level. 
So it seems to really be dependent on your role, whether or not you're, you know, using math or whether you're using other skills. So like Dr. Gashkai said, it is a mix of both, but as a student, it does seem like it is more technical at my level. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm teaching modeling and simulation, but uh, there wasn't, so this is one of the technical, right, uh, courses that we have, William, uh, in the program, right? But it wasn't that you wouldn't be able to learn it uh, without extensive technical background, right? Oh, no, you don't need... Um, you know, you don't need to be a major in math to, to right. learn about these classes. They are, Dr. Gashai does a great job of introducing the topic and kind of starting from uh, the very basics and sometimes even fundamentals, which then you could build off of. So there will be learning required, but it's not a hard task at all. Um, it's um, achievable. So it is, even if you don't have a huge technical background but you you're you're willing and you're engaged and uh all that i think all of these courses are achievable right that it's not yeah. that you can't take any of them yeah yeah and something i noticed uh lmu i just briefly glanced over the curriculum for systems engineering so there is also they do emphasize, it seems like a separate track between, you know, modeling and also management. So you do also get the qualitative or the managerial based classes, I guess, which require different skills. So as a physics undergraduate and master's in electrical engineering, I really took, um, I really learned a lot from the uh, softer skills, if you will. So the present, you know, creating presentations or uh, just my general speaking ability has improved when talking about my, my work. So there's, you just learned so many different skills in this program. Yeah, and, and it, it is, it has that flexibility. So you can, uh, when you come to the program, you can actually choose your track that you want to be on. So when after um, finishing the fundamental of system engineering, uh, then as William said, uh, you can take more technical courses, you can take more managerial courses, you can take more uh, focused and specialized courses related to aerospace and whatnot. Thank you for that. That was very helpful. Very good. Any other questions? Any concerns that you guys have? I, I have a concern. So I'm, like I just said, I just graduated in January. Um, and I see the other two people here, they they have like work experience. So would that like be harder for me as someone that doesn't have work experience? Or what do you think? I honestly don't think so because there is a lot, because we have this uh, smaller classes, right? There is a lot of discussion. There is a lot of learning within the class. I don't think anybody feels left out or, and as we, we build classes, so everybody is involved, engaged, we go through. So for example, for the project management, you guys pick the project that you're interested in and you build it step-by-step step throughout the semester, right? So you want to say, I, I really am interested in this project, whatever the project is. It could be, as I said, something related to homelessness or something about aerospace engineering. Uh, so you take this project, you identify what it is exactly that you want to do related to this area, right? What is the specific thing that you want to deliver? And throughout the semester, we build it piece by piece and uh, take it there. And 
I don't think any of the students who don't have the background, uh, managerial background, have any problem doing it. Uh, but the advantage is that you're sitting in a class that uh, you have mix of students. And we all learn from each other. It doesn't matter the experience or not, because when you don't have an experience, you bring in fresh uh, look, right? And you're, you actually think about it and say, oh, maybe we can do it this way. And with the experience, you can bring, of course, the wisdom that you got from your experience. So I honestly, from where I sit, I haven't noticed any disadvantage. William, what do you say? Yeah, so I'm kind of that person you just described. I, <laughs> um, in your question, I did not have you know, large organization experience. I tended to work with a smaller company uh, the summer prior to coming to LMU. So, and that was directly after undergraduate. Um, so I love how I get to um, talk directly to people who have been in industry for multiple years, you know, sometimes even 15, 20 years even. And I, I, view, I view that as my advantage to just kind of learning about how organizations work um, or even different problems that they face. So um, it is a good mix of both. So there are also people in my class who are in a similar boat where they do not have massive industry experience. So you do get a, get a really um, good mix. So William took my modeling and simulation last year, and now he's taking the project management this year, and he's also my TA uh, for the modeling and simulation this year. And also he is my helping me with um, the part that I was talking about having research centers in a way and all that. So um, I'm glad that um, I invited you, William, to this <laughs> to this session. It's it's really good to hear the student perspective as well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, any other questions, comments? What? So can I ask you what uh, intrigues you to come to LMU? So what are the things that you see, oh, this is why I would like to join LMU and these are the reasons that I don't like to join LMU. Can you explain those to me? Kashif? Yeah, um, so for me, LMU is just right down the street from where I live. So it's uh, very convenient if I want to just go on campus and study. But then also I like how LMU had a dual degree program with systems engineering and the business degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know a lot of schools that I looked at didn't have exactly that. So I think that was really like the top of my list of why I wanted to come to LMU. Very good. Thank you. Yes, I think this flexibility in the, and there is a lot of flexibility in the program, depending on what you desire really and what you want to be. So thank you. Angela, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I mean, kind of similar to what you said earlier. I mean, of course, um, you know, it is convenient as far as location goes. And um, like like you just said, there's a lot of opportunities in different areas with the system engineering and engineering functions. But um, it seems like the culture as well has been, from what I see in here, it just seems like, uh, like you said, it feels like a community. And the um, like you said, the relationship between the students and the staff, from what I hear, you know, I have, I have friends and that also go to LMU and hear lots of good things. So um, I think that's a big thing as well as just, you know, the programs yes, that are offered. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely that's excited. That it has that feeling. It, 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 it's a sense of belonging, yeah. Mm -hmm. And community, yes. Natalie? Yeah, the opp opportunities are definitely a big plus, but 
go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I thought that you know, but please continue. That was it. Go ahead. Natalie, what, what are your. Uh, definitely a lot of the same things as Angela. Like I, I went to Laverne, which is a pretty small private college or university. And I just felt like that sense of community that I don't know I, I would have gotten if I had to gone to a larger sized university. So I feel like going to another small, like you said, community focused um, grad, grad program. Like I, personally for me in my undergrad, I got to connect with my professors really well. I got to be um, a TA for two of my professors for like physics and then um, my systems engineering professor. And I really, really like enjoyed that get to have that level of connection um so that was a big thing for me for looking into lmu looking at another small school where i can maybe build that connection like you went uh, absolutely absolutely this is the place for that uh i um, i uh, used to teach at usc before joining lmu um and one of the reasons that i at the end decided to uh, teach at LMU, one of the reasons was, yes, sense of community and this close opportunity for this close, uh, because the class sizes are small. Uh, you can actually pay attention to one another. Uh, people care for each other. The, your classmates are there for you as well. Uh, yeah, definitely it's a sense of community. And you have more flexibility to choose your own path, I think. Because the programs are more flexible, people are more flexible. Um, everybody's here to figure out what's your passion, what it is that you want to do and help you through that. So I think all of those elements make it a, um, a good place to be. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, any other questions? If not, I, I have one question that I do want you to touch on um, before we conclude. So I know you kind of touched on this in your introduction, um, you know, stating when you joined the industry, you were, you know, one of the only women in the room. Um, I know you are really kind of passionate about the inclusivity of the engineering field. And I wanted to know if you could elaborate and talk about that experience a little more for yourself. The, sure, definitely. So, um, Yes, uh, it is. I was, um, a lot of times I was the only woman at, and still is true. I mean, in aerospace engineering, the, it is still, uh, even when I was coming from aerospace, most of the time it was, uh, a lot of times it was just me in the room as a woman. Uh, but what was interesting um, all this time is that uh, I was born and raised in Iran. So when I, when I came here, I was 19. Um, and, uh, but what definitely um, was amazing to me throughout all this time and all this journey is that the amount of inclusivity that not only, so um, imagine, not, not, not only I became an aerospace engineer, uh, but also work on projects that was highly classified. Now as a woman, as, as Iranian woman, right? Iranian American woman, all of that, that, that there is a culture, and that is the importance of, um the culture that is inclusive really uh, that um i had the opportunity to work on really highly classified projects uh, brief four star generals send reports to congress um and all of that is because there is a trust and 
so I was, yes, I was the, an immigrant. I, when I came here, I had a um, little girl as well. So I was, um, it wasn't, I, I, I can't say it was easy. It wasn't, it was enjoyable to have a kid and go to college, uh, but it wasn't easy. Um, but I think the whole atmosphere of, um, I've been lucky that I've been in the right places. Uh, like when I went to undergrad, I went to Berea College, which is a small liberal arts college in Kentucky. Uh, that was very supportive, extremely supportive school. Um, I owe a lot to them. Uh, of course, Purdue is a bigger school and uh, I did my graduate studies there. But after that, when I came to LA, um, here is all these opportunities from aerospace to RAND. It was uh, really because of the, that culture of being um, inclusive and um, accepting and not having any any type of um, I would say um, baggages that people bring to the table right that uh, but it was none of that and that's why uh, I was fully, was able to be engaged and uh, live by my passion and do things that I was passionate about because there was no pushback, really. And I became project leads for, so I led teams, 40, 50 people, all men. Uh, these are men from, uh again high level engineers managers from different organization air force research lab navy research lab um and other organizations and uh again there was no problem a woman leading men and they were comfortable with that actually in a way, it was our team, I would say, did better than most other teams <laughs> because uh, that there is that uh, touch of nurturing and understanding and it's a different, it's a different touch. Thank you. <laughs> I have another question if there's time. Um, yeah. Um, my, my thing is, so in my industry, I've been actually asking around and trying to pick all the engineers brain on, you know, best route forward for myself. And, you know, it's really common to see engineers go from a technical role to learning the business side of things. But for someone like me, I'd be going from business to the technical side or the, you know, engineering side of things. And it's really rare to come across someone that's had that experience. Um, do you know of any students that have gone from business to engineering? And if so, do you know any of the challenges or successes they've had or, um, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. But uh, what uh, type of engineering? I mean, it depends, right? Yeah, I mean, in this case, we'll stick to systems engineering, right? So just learning the concepts and the how, how all the functions come together and how you could, so you know, successfully manage. Go ahead. To system engineering, it's, it's a perfect match. So we have dual degree, actually, as Hashif said, on system and business. So coming from business to system engineering is a smooth move. You wouldn't have any problem, I believe. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I know from what you and William said earlier about the classes, and you know, you don't need that technical background to, you know, be successful. But I just wasn't sure if there's any challenges or any recommendations to someone coming from business over to. No, I don't. Uh, it, 
first of all, from business to system engineering is a smooth transition. Uh, and actually you can get your dual degree. And, uh, but if you're not interested in business at all, and you want to do mostly system engineering or going, uh, taking other options like healthcare system engineering or aerospace system engineering, or uh, so you want to do that, then you would be easily able to do it. And what is technical really, if you're smart and willing to work, it's not that you need because we really build it from um, the foundation. And so you think that um, any of those functions within systems engineering, aerospace versus mechanical or any of those different functions I've seen offered at LMU are applicable for someone like me? I, I was more um, gearing towards the management, the engineering management concentration because I thought it fit best for me, but um, I wouldn't mind learning the other functions as well if you think it's doable. Yeah, so uh, system engineering with management, of course, it's uh, it would be easy for you. But uh, I mean, easy meaning you can, I mean, you um, wouldn't have any problem. But uh, even going to the aerospace engineering, if you're interested, I don't think you would have any problem. So uh, a well-educated person who can do their job and I, I, I think they would be successful in, in any of those areas. Um, system engineering in health management is also an option, right? So there are different tracks, health, business, system engineering as um, for managers, and uh, aerospace system engineering. These are different tracks. You can pick anyone. And it doesn't have to be, I mean, you can come here, take a course, see how you like it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> of course. Any other questions? Well, I hope that I see you guys soon at LMU. And uh, best of luck. <laughs>